Let me, I'm gonna use a sapling to uh, cut some uh, tent pegs. That's what someone was requesting. Tent pegs to me are kind of, I don't know. I never use a tent peg. They're fun to carve, but I don't know. I don't really use them. So uh, anyway, just gonna use a knife a little bit here. Take off some of these other little branches. And I'll do a little bit of carving. Let's see. Again, in this case, just fold it in half, cut through it. All right, so now I got a clean, long piece of wood, right? So let's do that again. I'm just gonna break this. Create somewhat of a, I suppose, a tent peg. And just do a little bit of carving. All right, now, when I'm doing like uh, any kind of bushcraft stuff, and no, this is not a bushcraft knife, this is just supposed to be some kind of extreme test of this knife, because most people would never try doing this with a three on a knife. Um, but some of the, the cutting techniques, uh, I usually don't use like a saber grip, I'll use a relaxed grip, you know, or a natural grip. In other words, I tuck my thumb in. All right, and uh, when I'm carving, I don't necessarily push off. I mean, that's, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. And you can see, you can easily just rotate your stick and create somewhat of a peg. It's very sharp. Let's find a tree and start beating on this thing and batoning it. Um, hmm. Bear with me a second, looking around. Eh, what the hell. I'll just use this one. I'm right here. Why not, right? Kind of want to go with something skinnier. But, uh, whatever. Alright, so let's try to baton. I want to give you a good shot of this so you guys can see what's up what's going down with this thing all right hold on i gotta level everything out since i'm in the woods here everything's all uneven all right so there's the tree compared to the blade now let me uh, show you a little tip here you know if i were to guess i would say this is probably a i don't know what is that get off my hand um my total guess is maybe a two and a half inch tree possibly three inches but there is a way you can easily uh find out the, the, the um you know diameter of a tree well the diameter is the outside the actual like you know how big a tree is is this a three inch tree five inch tree whatever uh, all you gotta do is get a string and a uh, tape measure or a ruler in this case and using some yellow paracord here just wrap it around the tree all right so you have your circumference the tree's yay long. Take your ruler, measure it out. Okay, only stopped at the yellow. So this is just over five inches, about five and a half inches or so. And you divide that number by three. So roughly five and a half divided by three, I wanna say like around two inches or so. So it's not as big as I thought. If you hold it up against the tree, you kinda of get an idea anyway. You see about the two inch mark. So we're, we're cutting through a two inch diameter tree. I don't know if diameter is actually the right term for it. It's two inches if you drill the hole through it. There you go. Turn on my gloves. And then we are going to baton. I have to find a baton. I'm in the woods. I don't think that'll be very hard to do. But who knows, a lot of times this, all the um, branches and stuff on the ground, all the ground coverage is all, you know, rotten and stuff like that. So it actually, it's not always easy to find a, a good baton. But anyway. Yeah, we'll try this for now. Something off the ground. Okay. So, oh great. I put my glove on. I can't get to my knife. <laughs> it's in my pocket. I'm wearing gym shorts right now. No, I shouldn't be wearing gym shorts in the woods, but this was kind of impromptu. I'm in my backyard and I'm going, Jesus, I can't find good trees for like demos. And I said, screw it. And I started walking. And about two and a half miles later, I'm here. Because, uh, you know, my neighbors have a bunch of trees and stuff. They're perfect. But I can't just go on my neighbor's property and start cutting their trees down, making videos. It just ain't right, boy. It ain't right. All right. So, bear with me. Put my glove back on. Maybe a long video. That's okay. Some people like the long ones. All right. Gloves on. Put my eye protection on. And away we go. So, Microtech, the uh, select fire, manual action. Get a good shot of this before I start batoning. As you guys know, it is razor sharp still, even after all the testing I've done. Okay, see the marks. Let's take a look 
close look at our edge, show everything straight just in case it chips out or rolls or something or if our tip snaps. So anyway, on to business. Just going to keep notching in this tree and hopefully baton through it. So this is too thick for me to, well, I could start bending this, but it would cut too high. It's not gonna bend down here. So basically just gonna baton through it. But you can see how, you know, the blade, the thickness here. It's a fat tree. You wouldn't wanna do this with a folding knife. First swing, my, uh... oh, that was interesting. You see that, the lock disengaged. All right, I'm coming in way too steep here. All right. Lock is disengaged again. And again. It's disengaged, but let me just keep going with this. Okay, not so smart, Jeff. <laughs> Smacking your camera. Move this around a little bit here. Okay. All right, so, as you saw there, the first couple swings, um, the lock did disengage just from the vibration and the pressure. All right, so right now, let's see. Still locks, but, hang on a second, if you listen carefully, a little bit of blade play, a little vertical play. All right, I can tell you, if I had a better baton, this thing has taken chunks out of this tree like nobody's business. The grind's nice, it's extremely sharp, the steel's great, but it is a folding knife and it's not meant to be you know, doing this kind of a task. But I want to get through this tree at least. I do need a heavier baton. This isn't really cutting the mustard, but let's try this again. All right, now let me take note of something. I'm gripping like this, so my finger is up against the lock. So perhaps it's my finger that's moving it over. So I'm going to try to hold it a different way. I'm gonna hold it way down here at the bottom to make sure my hand's not really touching that, that uh, lock, because that might have been what was disengaging it. I don't know. You know what? I don't think that, uh, you know, that the thing failed so much as I pushed over on accident. Keep going with this, see where we're at. Hold down low. I don't have a great angle on this. That's right. All right, that time it did disengage and I didn't do it myself. It's holding way down here. So the vibration is unlocking this blade from the handle okay there goes my baton all right so so far, we got a little bit of vertical blade play. We're getting through a tree pretty good. I know this knife is going to continue to get through this tree. It's just uh, I need a better angle swinging this and I need a better baton. So I will be right back. And in the meantime, let's uh, stick this in the bottom here and leave it just like that. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. New baton. All right, so let me change the angle a little bit here. Actually, let me bring it over here. But 
still want it nice and close well here let's do this let me use my brain for a second let me aim it towards what i'm looking at and zoom in a little bit this way i don't have to smack my camera there we go all right no uh tip damage at all from slamming into the tree like that so that's fine all right let's get this tree down and talk some more about this Leaning on another tree behind us. Can you see that? Oh, I'm zooming in again. Alright, so just leaned up against the trees behind us, but let me just finish this off real quick. talk about this a little bit now all right um it's taking massive chunks i mean for a folding knife it really is taking chunks out of this tree so that's not really the issue obviously the biggest concern would be first of all is it going to break and no it hasn't you know it didn't break from this test but there has been some uh in my opinion some significant blade play created by batani with it it shouldn't be a shock or anything. Um, I really didn't know what to expect. I thought maybe it would just completely break. So let's check it out right now. See where we're at with the blade play. All right. Bring this close and uh, talk about this a little bit. Unzoom. All right, so yes, there is blade play now. Put my gloves down for a second. We can actually hear it. And oh, I mean, not hopefully, but <laughs> I'm sure you can see it. I mean, my hand here is moving a little bit, so it looks more extreme than it is, but if I hold, try to hold this steady, I think I can see that. Now let's look at the bottom for our lock bar. Now, when you create just the tiniest bit of, of uh, separation between those steels, when you have an impact, it will want to shoot over like that, okay? So in the beginning, I thought maybe it was my hand that was putting pressure on it, that was opening it. That is a possibility, but ultimately, it did fail without me using my hand. You know what I'm saying? Because I was holding down here where that wouldn't have affected the lock bar. So we do a blade play. Let's see, when it's closed, the detent's still awesome. Still sucks in and everything. That's not a problem. It's not gonna shake open or anything. Um, open, you can hear it. All right. So uh, obviously it's not up for that task. <laughs> what I can tell you, here, let's do another little test here. My hand, all right, right here. It is still ridiculously shaving sharp. Okay. I have bold spots in my hand. I'm going to clean up what I did last time, my last cut test. All right, so what did we learn here? Well, we learned one rule, which is it, nothing's changed. Um, don't use a faulty knife for batoning. 
period. It's way too much abuse. It's not just a hard use test. It's literally abuse of your knife. Um, there's, there may be some folding knives out there that will withstand it longer than others. I promise you there's not a knife on this planet that's a folding, locking knife that will not eventually succumb to uh, that abuse from a taunting. Okay, so it's not meant for that. Um, the knife didn't fail completely. The next thing we'll do is we'll uh, talk to Microtech, see what's, what's up with the, uh, the warranty information. Now this, of course, I'm, I'm documenting me abusing the knife. So they may just say, hey, you know, tough luck, man. <laughs> you know, there's nothing we can do for you. And if that's the case, that's fine because I'm not adhering to normal use. And my phone's ringing, I'll be right back. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, I am abusing the knife. So if I don't get this fixed or replaced, I'm not gonna be shocked by it. But I will let you guys know what, what they say as far as uh, warranty information. Um, I still love the knife for, for what it was intended to be used for, which I believe would be um, a tactical type knife, a perhaps self-defense, but more likely than not, um, an EDC knife, okay? It maybe not, it doesn't look like a, a casual EDC knife, but it, as far as what I would use it for, definitely EDC use. Um, it's got a very effective blade style. The blade steel, if you get nothing else out of this, you know, this, this testing series, it's check out S35 uh, NV, or excuse me, and S35 VN. Um, so far, this has only been my second encounter with this steel, but both times it's been amazing. And I personally think that it does surpass uh, S30V, which a lot of people send me messages, um, you know, asking if I can compare the two. But from my experience, this is uh, holding a better edge than uh, S30V. And I have done similar tests with fixed blades in S30V as well as D2 and 154CM, uh, 1095 carbon, and I had a fixed blade with 01 uh, before that I did a lot of heavy use with and, you know, batani and stuff like that. So that concludes today's abuse of the Microtech. Yeah, we ended up with a little bit of blade play. But if I wanted to, I could still shave my face and walk out of these woods in style. So I still love it. It's an awesome knife. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your time as always. And I will catch you soon. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.